Come on, soybeans, you can make it through one more 100 degree day. Okay, so I made it back. My dad drove me over here in the semi for the uh, second load. Loaded up some of these uh, kosher bales. Um, there's like 16 more here. And got them all for free, so we'll use them whatever we got. I mean, getting into a sunny, getting into a tractor parked in the sun, that is like scorching. It's 104 today. Uh, I think it's 102 right now. So it is a cooker. It is a cooker. Meet the Peterson family. Our dad, the three Peterson brothers, and our families farm together in central Kansas. Our family farm started in 1882 and has been raising cattle and crops ever since. Please subscribe to this channel and give us a like and a comment if you enjoy the video. Taking these cows home from the pasture today. All right, we remembered our flags for the second load here. Shout out to uh, Dakota for giving us these flags on a speaking event. Oh no, I didn't get there. Right. Dakota Border Cattle Company. All right, here is the pin. We're oh, putting them in. So I'm gonna swing open this gate, and Kendall's gonna back up. The trailer up here will let them out. All right, here we go. And then there were eight. That time I closed off part of the catch pen, make the pen smaller so it'd be easier to get them to run up the owl. Working some new cattle. Really nice morning to work some cattle in the 70s. Compared to yesterday, it was probably 95 at this point in the morning. I think it's a high of 80 for today, so that's cool for us. This M7 pretty much spends all summer switching back and forth between the DMC and the baler. It's time to hook back onto the swather again. I am gonna go swath some pads in our uh, forage, double crop forage field that we're gonna graze. And then we'll bale up those pads and then put a fence there, a hot wire fence to keep the calves in. There's more forage out here than I thought there would be. We got sunflowers, turnips and radishes, sorghum sedan and millet. This will feed the cows for a while. It doesn't look like it's gonna rain tonight. So I'm starting to pump back up. But it sure is a beautiful evening. Gonna be thankful for some cooler weather at least. Quite the sunset. They're getting rain up there by Minneapolis, where my wife's from. So I've been um, starting the pumps up in in the evenings and shutting them off in the afternoons again while it's been over 100 degrees. Since we're running low on water, anyways. I thought um, might as well make the best use of it. So it's kind of limited irrigation anyways. I'm trying to grow my beard back. I told my wife I'd grow my beard back when it rained, so I'm trying to make it rain. And I also got a different pickup truck. New to me pickup truck. Went with the four doors to have a car seat in the back easier. And went with a small truck because I didn't feel like I ever used my big V8 like it should be used so still need to sell sell the white one i had to uh
drain the oil on this when I shut it down. So you can rack up uh, 300 hours pretty quick on an irrigation engine. Got to stay on top of that. 300 to 350 hours on the propane engines because they burn pretty clean. 200 to 250 on the diesel irrigation engines. So I uh, looked up what other people did one time and it was all over the board and I settled with this. So could have a funnel, but you know, it's not too bad. Okay, ready to go. Look at that nice sunset. See how long I can uh, keep this bed decently clean and inside. I already got the dust all over it. Oh well. What's up, everybody? It is August 17th. Still no rain. Uh, that makes 45 days. We are pressing on. It's cooler temperatures today. Uh, it's, it was in the 70s yesterday. It's in the 80s today. So that is uh, refreshing. It gives us a little bit more pep in our step. Makes you feel like working a little bit more. The crops are still in rough shape, but at least they're not going downhill like when it's 103. I am currently heading uh, from the home place down to my parents' house. We are picking the field of corn uh, right next to my parents' house for high moisture corn. Our next harvest is upon us, just like that. We're not usually picking corn in this part of August. Usually it's the first part of September, but uh, the heat and the dry kind of sped it up. So, but like I said, it is a beautiful day today with the clouds cooler temperatures. Beets don't look so bad when it's cooler. All right, we're taking the truck back here around the, the bend where there's some uh, drier corn. We're cutting it high moisture, but it's, it's still uh, only part of the field is ready. All right, there we are. He uh, just about has that semi loaded there. And then I brought this one. We don't have the grain cart hooked up yet because that tractor is still uh, spreading manure. And the Kubota is still on the swather. And the 7430 is still on the scraper to scrape manure. And we're just kind of getting started here. So that's kind of the situation. So we are uh, picking high moisture corn for uh, kind of two main reasons. One is uh, since this corn just, especially on these tough spots of the field, since it just uh, died more than ripened, um, we're a little worried about uh, standability. Um, we haven't seen any signs that it's going to fall or drop ears. Um, but uh, just when a plant doesn't get to do its normal thing, we just thought um, this is an option, and and uh, it's actually a pretty good option. Because um, the second reason is the feed yard, um, which isn't, it's a few miles farther from us than uh, the elevator we normally haul to. Um, but they actually offer a premium for high moisture corn, um, if you can get it to them in the, in the right range and at the right time. And um, so we're giving that a try. and. Um, with this 9770 combine, it's a little more equipped to handle high moisture corn than our, our old 9600 was. And um, so we are trying it out and uh, see how we like it. Uh, most of this field is still too wet. We weren't sure until we got out in it, um, but there's this knoll that I'm on and it's running from 25 to, to 30% with the green spots, a little over 30%. And that's actually where the feed yard wants it, is, is 30 to 35 percent, and they'll take it down to about 25, I believe. Um, I think that's that's right. So anyways, we're giving this a try, and uh, it's kind of fun to do a new thing, 
and uh, get some harvesting um, going and out of the way and spread things out, not have everything to do at once. So you can hear, see here where it goes down to that low good ground. It's just green and that's going to make really good corn. And uh, I went into it a little bit and I mean, it's just green, green, green. There's no way we want to combine it now. So I'm having to stop and back up and turn around, which is not ideal. Um, and that's why we probably won't cut another load today, but we just kind of wanted to get out here and see what it was like. Um, and it wasn't as dry as we thought it maybe was, which I guess is good and a testament to all we do to, you know, help this corn hold on um, longer uh, when, when the rain shuts off. So the longer it it can stay green and, and take to actually ripen and not die, that's just the better for our yields. Um, so uh, I don't mind seeing it still green because like our irrigated corn is still a ways away from being done. You know, it's going through its whole deal and filling those ears really nice. So the longer it takes, the fuller those ears are getting. My dad used to do high moisture milo all the time and roll it into our silo. This irrigation engine over here decided to um, not run right. So I've been messing with it trying to figure out what might be wrong. And this morning, uh, it's nice and cool at 7 a.m. But I'm going to put some new spark plugs in there. Um, and if that doesn't help it any, then I'm probably going to have to have a real mechanic come out. And uh, I'm going to have to stop playing mechanic because... I've reached the end of my knowledge, but maybe this will fix it. So, gotta start with the simple things, right? This thing has run for like 600 hours already this year, so... Just had to, had to give us trouble at least once. So I thought I was having a fuel issue. Uh, this is one of our propane engines. It's a uh, Chevy 350, I believe converted to propane but I kind of cleaned out all the places we've had fuel trouble before it's still doing it and then I thought well you know I should probably check the spark plugs we've put a lot of hours on this so you mechanics out there can tell me what I'm not doing right or if I definitely needed spark plugs so one thing that's nice about an irrigation engine is we have pretty easy access to everything. Um, besides being over the water, you don't want to drop anything. Now I could just pull it out of here and if I had a mechanic come out, I probably would pull it off on dry ground. But you never know. It's always hard to know how serious a problem it is. So you just start with it over the water and then... If I get too far, I should just pull it over on dry ground. But it's a nice, peaceful spot to work in the morning. So first tick up, I had uh, the spark plug wire ripped off while trying to get to pull off of the spark plug. But Greg's coming from Lindsberg, so I'll have him stop at Napa and hopefully get one I don't know I suppose just being out in the sun the rubber gets a little weak like I said I'm not exactly sure how long these have been on here because we've we've had this engine a couple years I don't think we've changed them well I know we haven't changed them so I don't know when they were last changed all right she's running Water's here.
Look at that old box. Should be going. So this morning I'm uh, trying something kind of new. Um, we got some foliar fertilizer uh, from Pro Green Ag, the same the same guys we were getting the uh, shock product from that we were using um, in our uh, in our chemical mixes. Uh, this is a, a foliar fertilizer, and so we're gonna try it on both some soybeans and some Milo to help them uh, get through this uh, dry spell and hopefully you know make it to a rain and uh, just be more efficient um, with the what they have available to them right now they don't have much water you know that makes it hard to get nutrients so um, applying some fertilizer foliar fertilizer that they can take in through their leaves um, you know hopefully will lower some stress and um, people have had some good good results using this so uh, we're still gonna need rain but we'll see um, how this does so I don't have my tender truck, I'm just using some hose because um, this is just kind of a trial and so I don't need that many gallons but uh, this is the product we're using X14 from Pro Green Ag. We're just gonna, we're putting it on you know right as the beans and Milo are, are really going into uh, reproductive mode you know really putting on pods, shooting their heads and uh, should be good timing be even better timing if you know we could get a rain but uh, this is gonna help them through this stress so Greg's got some pretty nice soil on these beans uh, probably won't be able to see on camera but there's a little mist on there so you can see even in this good ground the beans are kind of starting to turn their leaves I was trying to get here early in the morning and then there was a lot of dew. Anyways, we got it on. And uh, now uh, I have a different product called Carb 4 that I'm gonna put on some Milo. And uh, So this was X14 on beans and then we're gonna try this Carb 4 on Milo. Here's the Carb 4. So. I got about 40, 50 acres worth. All right, got to load it loaded up. Now we will uh, go spray it out, pretty simple. This Milo looks awfully good. I would love for it to get a rain. Have I said that before? Pretty good weed control on our Milo this year. I mean, there's a couple that made it through, but overall pretty pleased. Partly because it hasn't rained since we planted it. Don't mind me, just out here spraying some go-go juice on my Milo. So this is the field I was on this spring in a vlog where I was doing variable rate fertilizer and you can see this Milo is shorter and well here's a really tough spot. So that's why I did variable rate because this hill, this little knoll just does not produce like all that bottom ground. And that was the reason for that. You can sure see it show up. You can see some heads popping out here. I gotta watch out for ruts because uh, the Milo covers them up. You can't see them. You just kind of have to remember where they might be. Thanks for watching, everyone. Check out our music videos linked in the description. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, Snapchat, and explore our website, www.petersonfarmbrothers.com. See you guys next time.